Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again. It's Wednesday. We're going to have a little bit of a mosh today. A couple things to talk. I had a great day yesterday. It was my girlfriend's mother's 81st birthday. We celebrated having a pizza party. Man, I love a pizza party. Oh. You know, when I retired at the MTA, after 32 years, and when I retired, they don't do nothing. They, you know, the, they don't care. You just, all they tell you when you're leaving is make sure you turn in your parking pass or else uh, you won't get uh, your any of your checks. So make, you know, that's it. No celebration, no, hey, thanks. So well, my father got a watch when he retired. You know, they had a little, a banquet dinner. Not, not us. But what we did, uh, it's kind of a thing that uh, the guys, there was uh, three of us retiring. We all chipped in and got pizza for the entire crew. You know, everybody that was working that night had pizza on us. Can you imagine we had a <laughs> we had a, we had to throw our own retirement party? That's the MTA going your way. A uh, couple things to talk about today, like I said, but it was good pizza, by the way. A uh, couple things to talk about. Uh, first off, uh, I was watching 357 Magdad's fantastic video he did during the week, and the Prince of New Jersey he did a video that uh he restored a screwdriver and i had to yeah i tell you he does such nice work and i had to laugh because uh it was twisted the blade was twisted and everybody in the comments would go, how do you twist a blade like that how does that blade get twisted on such a short screwdriver i'll have a a link in the description of this video but i knew right away how it happened i said i know how that happened because you know why i've done it <laughs> and i want to show you what we're talking about let's get to it now, one of the things we look for in screwdrivers a lot of times, and you know I do prefer the square shank screwdrivers only because they are a much more durable and stronger screwdriver than the round shank. But um, a lot of times what we like about them too, if you have a stubborn fastener, you could take a any uh, adjustable wrench, you can put it on the shaft and you could use the extra torque and turn your screw. Some of the Phillips, because Phillips traditionally are usually round shank, although very few you do find a square shank, but um, you could do that a lot of times a good Phillips will have a some kind of a adapter on there where you could put a, uh, a wrench here and give you some added torque so that you can turn it. Now, uh, that's been for years. Now, years ago when you didn't have an adapter like that, some people would use the the vice grip method where you would clamp onto the shaft and you would turn it that way, you know, to give yourself extra torque. But and let me show you what a lot of times happens and why you might get a twist in the outer edge of your flat, especially your flat blade screwdriver. Now, many times we'll have, and again, this usually happens on a flat bladed screwdriver as because the Phillips just doesn't have the ability to torque, you can't put a lot of torque on a Phillips, it'll just cam out. Uh, let's say you had a, a screw or a fastener like this and you had a round shank screwdriver. And uh, so what happens is a lot of times people will put the screwdriver into the screw like this and they will take a, a wrench, especially an adjustable, put it onto the blade just above the screw and do this and turn and torque it this way. Now, that is a, a, t absolutely acceptable. The problem is if you have a really, really uh, strong fastener or some jammed fastener, when you do put the torque on here, because this kind of blocks your vision of the blade, a lot of times you'll feel it move a little bit and you'll realize the fastener didn't move, but your, <laughs> your blade got twisted. And that's why I had a laugh when I was watching 357's video because uh when he as soon as he showed that he's like how would something like this happen and i said like, i know i've done it i'm i've i'm the king abuser of tools when i was a young man but i've learned my lesson but that's how that happened okay i am on a quest to clean up so you will see some uh we're trying to make these videos entertaining and still have enough time for me to get all the rest of the stuff done today's project is something i think you might enjoy because uh everybody likes kind of hammers and, and whatnot but this one here is a little bit different in this fact that uh is called a setting hammer or a tinner's hammer used primarily in sheet metal work but because of the shape of this they used it in so many different applications you can use it for anything i think this is a malco but they were indicative of having these leather handles that 
like adding these weren't the best handles a lot of times you had problems they would loosen up but they were attractive when they were polished up or came from the factory now what they would do is after they stacked the handles they would sand it down to get the shape and they would dip it into a almost like a varnish it was a different like a a different kind of coating but it's very similar to a varnish or shellac and that would give that nice finish to it and then over time you see what happens to it you know it gets chipped or whatever um you could see here we have a little bit of not much pitting let's take it to the wire brush see if we can find the name on here real here is our post wire brush valuation again we just did to clean up no name that i could see you know when you get close to the camera sometimes it picks up on that other lens but uh i don't see any name on this side other than wear safety goggles on this side nothing unless it was laser etched you know that always comes off easy i don't see anything on the top um you see the forging the regular forge lines here they did a, a quick grind on them and this is just worn and you can see it was ground at one time somebody was trying to you know uh do adjust that tip and uh, which is common depending on your use now if you look here at the back here it does say something on the back here uh first of all it says uh 18 ounce head okay and on top of it do you see all over here does that say a n n a n o a nano i don't know what that you know uh you can see these are spun rivets now sometimes believe it or not companies like s-wing or things like that would make hammers especially their seconds or something for other companies or whatever but i don't know uh we'll see what this is and first of all let's we're going to have to take it off we don't have to worry about losing the name we're going to sand this down. i want to show you a different kind of technique i'm going to use called a uh, rubbed waxed and uh just to get this handle back. So let's do it. Here we're going to change our grits. Now we were using a 40, worn 40 grit. Now we're going to go to a worn 80 grit. So uh, that'll change the appearance and get rid of the coarse scratches from the previous disc. Most of the metal work done you could see here we took it down to a nice satin finish all the angles are good everything looks nice and clean now we got to work on this part now what we're going to do is we're going to start with a coarse belt and then we're going to work our way down the belts just the first thing we're going to do is get this old varnish or whatever it is off and you'll see it'll, it'll leave a very rough finish so let's get to that first Now we removed all the old uh, varnish or whatever that coating was on there. You always got to look for shiny spots. You see, it's all dull. That's good. Now we're just going to go real quick, the fine belt, just to just to get rid of some of this rough spot. And then I'll show you what we're going to do next. But uh, you see how it's coming. Now you can along. see this is with the fine belt. And you see what, what you see the shine that's coming up on that. That's called burnishing. And that's what we're starting to do. We're starting to burnish the leather. But that's nice and smooth. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to apply wax you can use any kind of wax but we're going to apply wax and buff it into there almost like we're polishing it you know because that's end grain of leather and uh so what we want to do is make that very smooth and give it a nice shine. Now, like i said you can use any wax we're going to use just johnson's paste wax be only because it's a very soft see it's a very soft wax not a hard wax and for the first initial one we're going to put this on here onto the leather sorry I put onto the leather and then we're going to hit it with the heat gun so that it melts into the grain of the leather okay and i'll show you why we do that in a minute but you see what we're doing here now we're just applying a, a thick outer coat here because we want the heat gun to uh, melt it and get it all on the on the inside so on goes a thick coat of johnson's paste wax if you see any dry areas Make sure you see it goes on real, real easy. And then we'll take the heat gun and, uh, and put it on. Just make sure if you see any areas that look dry, don't be afraid to put this on, okay? Because you can wipe off the excess. 
Now, once this is like this, we'll plug in the heat gun here. And here we go. We'll hit it with the heat gun. And let that absorb into the end grain of the leather. Now you can see that's just with the heat gun, just the heat gun. We didn't do any buffing or anything. You could see it absorbed. There's no waxy feel to it. It absorbed into, that's all end grain of the leather. It's sucking that in. We're gonna apply another coat because we want this to build up and then we'll hit it with the buffer. Now this is three coats of Johnson's paste wax again with the heat gun. It's all in now it absorbed in. Now we're going to start adding harder wax this is Boston Polish Butcher's Wax. Now we'll put that over the top and then hit that with the buff. Okay, this is a pretty firm wheel. This was I'm using it because it's a clean wheel. My buddy Joe, you know, Miss Trader Joe, he found a whole bunch of these in the garbage one time. He gave them to me, but this is a, a kind of a stiff wheel. We just want to get that to, it'll heat up the wax and kind of melt it in and give it a shine. Okay, you know my favorite part. Remember what this leather-handled hammer looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. See what we did here? We took it to a nice satin finish. Not, you know, it's very acceptable. Not a, uh, a high gloss, but uh, just very clean finish in here. We got rid of all the forge marks on the bottom that were there. You know, it's nice and clean. The top looks really nice. The face is good. Got all the bevels, you know how we like to do the bevels around the whole edge, really nice. But the handle, this is the one that everybody, you know, talks about here. And I believe that the hot wax finish that I showed you is a superior finish because unlike polyurethanes or varnishes or anything, it won't chip or peel off because it's an outside coating. The wax absorbs into the end grain. It's not a slippery finish. It's a very durable finish and uh, like an old shoe, you know. Very clean, very, you don't have to worry, that'll be the same. You can always apply more wax or whatever. You can't do that with a, uh, a brush on, a wipe on uh, liquid finish. And there we go. So this one's in the can. Nice little project for today. So in closing, that was a uh, four hour project start to finish. Uh, it takes time, you know. It, it, none of this stuff goes quick, but uh, it is rewarding when it's done. Four hours, my mind was off everything else. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope and we'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.